the 20th correction, uh, Romans 12 and 3. And we're going to add a little ice into the cake here and turn to Mark 11 and 24. And we're going to touch bases on those three passages along with the second Timothy. The difference in today, we're not going to, we're going to preach from the text, but it's not a textual sermon. It's a topical sermon, meaning I'm coming from a topic connected with Scripture. Amen? So we're not going to try to preach above or beyond anybody. We just want to make it plain and simple. But I want you to know that you see me jumping around. I'll be jumping from these three passages. Romans 12 and 3 was read earlier. The focus here is God hath dealt to every man the measure of faith. Second Mark 11 and 24, if you have your fingers there. What things soever ye desire when ye pray, believe that ye receive them, and ye shall have them. And don't get carried away with that because God is not going to give you everything you pray for. Yeah. Then there is 2 Timothy 4 and 7. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course and I have kept the faith. Now you can already see it. Faith is the essential word here. And the power pack of that is that a believer uh, has three things to do in this aspect of faith. First of all, you've got to exercise it and then expect to be tried and on top of everything, through it all, you've got to keep your faith. Somebody say amen. Amen. Everybody take your seats in the presence of Almighty God. Amen. We're going to just get right on along with what God has in store for us on today. Father, in the precious name of Jesus, and you Lord, to bless this hour. The moment of truth have come for each and every one of us. If you've already allowed us to bear witness, this baptism, fellowship, the singing of the songs of Zion, the prayer, praises, the testimonies that have gone on. But now, Master, it is preaching time. I ask that you would just lower me down into your bosom, Father. The old body is getting older, but Father, my desire is still strong to carry on the plan for Jesus. Thank you for last night's sleep. Thank you for my companion. And Lord, thank you for my household, my family. Thank you for everything, not just material thing, but spiritually what you're doing in my life day to day to day. Now open up the windows of heaven, Father, and pour out a blessing. And these your children will receive. In the precious name of Jesus we pray. Somebody shout amen. amen. Typically, I, I just want to, you've heard these words many a time, but, but I really want to, to, to tell you if you are a believer and if you know the Lord, as your personal Savior, put your hands together. <laughs> Knowing Him as your personal Savior is a value, is a strong, very strong tool here that we're going to try and just expedite here quickly for you to understand. And the three characteristics of this faith that we were talking about that it must be exercised, it must be tried, and it must be kept. It brings me back to no other subject except for you that if you're in the hands of God, stay in the hands of God, but keep on walking by faith. Look at somebody real quick and say, Neighbor, I got to keep walking. I got to keep on walking by faith. Say it one more time. Neighbor, I got to keep on walking. By faith. By faith. Amen. I find out in this Christian journey that I just can't make it without Jesus. Amen. And if you know him as your personal Savior, which I believe many of you do, you'll find out that each day with Jesus is sweeter than the day before. Amen. I don't know about you, but yesterday is already gone and I'm looking for tomorrow if it be God's will. Amen. The believer ought to feel and know the presence of God in and around their life. There's no joke about this or what we're going through, but 
I stopped by to tell you this morning that if you are walking not only in faith, that you'll find out that you got to walk by faith. Amen. And when you're walking by faith, that you feel a empowerment come over you every now and then that it seems like, well, I just don't know how I made it through the day, but thanks be to God Amen. that I made it through one more day. Amen. I don't know about you, but even though I may have been tried throughout the day, I may have had to stumble, trip up, and say, even try to knock me down, Amen. I still have to keep on walking by faith. Briefly here, as this passage tickled my inners on last night, I'm somewhat like Egan Rankin. This 20 some years or more of service, Romans have touched and anointed and given me much vision as what and revelation of what God is trying to say not only to his people but to even yours truly. And I feel that without a doubt that this very passage requires some explanation. And in this explanation, I want to be simple. I'm finding out that, that no one can say they do not have faith. Because the Bible says, somebody say the Bible says, the Bible says that each of us exhibit faith, each one of us, because we're a human being. And I, I find that we have faith in humans. We sure enough put faith in machinery. You know, the wheels that you cranked up this morning and you anticipated that everything ignited and got in place and all of a sudden, boom, you was on the road. And we believe in a lot or many things that bring the service to us. But, but of all these things that are around us, we constantly doubt God. Y'all don't want to hear that. Huh? Even though we, we, we work, and to say that the Bible comes right back and tells us that we can please everything and everybody else, but it says it's impossible without faith to please God. Do I have a witness? For those that come to God must believe that he is. Somebody say he is. He is. And that he is the rewarder of them who diligently seek him. Somebody help me out there. Yes. I want to take my time for you to understand this. Paul here in this message in Romans is speaking as God's messenger. He's speaking as an impossible individual who, who makes and knows who can make things possible. Mm -hmm. An apostle for the Lord, the authority here, he was about to exercise, uh, was known by every right that, that God had sent him to do this great work. And he's explaining to us here in this passage that it's evident that, that God's grace is sufficient for each one of us. Mm -hmm. But here he warns the believers that that inflated pride have no place in the believer's life. Can, can I say that again? I said inflated pride has no place in the believer's life. This is especially significant in every aspect in, in the light of Paul's teaching to teach us this point that first of all that he was trying to explain to the Jews that they are no better than the Gentiles. Yeah, yeah. Then he turns right back around and comes again and says the Gentiles are no better than the Jews. Uh -huh. I stop by to tell you, you're no better than the neighbor that's sitting beside you. God looks at all of us the same way. With an eye of love. With mercy and grace. And all because he loves us so very much. Uh -huh. But any such pride, I'm finding out what would, would, would undermine the oneness that's vital to each believer's growth. Mm -hmm. Undermining meaning God is not going to stoop low mm -hmm. just to pacify you and your pride. Mm -hmm. You don't have time. No. No. 
First of all, he can't be belittled. Do I have a witness? Each believer's personal appraiser within himself ought to be honest. If you don't know him, then get to know him. If you desire to know him better, then get in the word of God. And you'll learn more about it. You cannot walk by faith Huh? And expect. Mm -hmm. Come on, do it. No hardship. No trouble. And even as you exercise your faith, it's going to be tried. Do I have a witness? Yes. But in order to keep the faith and grow from it, God has given each believer, the Bible here says in this third verse, a measure of faith to serve him. Right. The faith isn't about who you are, what your name is. The faith isn't about what your title may be in a place of worship. The faith is not about your handle in the community or on your job. The faith is in God and in God alone. Can I get a witness? Amen. Faith is the substance of things hoped for yes. and the evidence of yes. things not seen. Right. I stop by to tell you that the faith that you're looking for, you won't be able to see it with the naked eye. You got to have faith in spite of what you can't see. And when God bless you, you like to find out that he has been there all the time. Can I get a witness of that? It's a measure of faith. People have the tendency to try to measure somebody else's faith. You don't have time for that. Let me tell you why you don't have time to measure somebody else's faith. Because you're too busy worried about what you may have yourself. You don't have a witness out there. Well, you know I'm here. Sister Thornton told me that, that it didn't happen because I didn't have enough faith. You better watch yourself. Because until you get where God is, and that won't be in this life or no other life, huh? you cannot measure. You don't have the power to measure somebody else's faith. Help me somebody. What may appear to you may be belief and faith all wrapped up in one will get you food. Because there's a whole lot of great pretenders. Yes sitting in the pew. Y'all want me to close out on that line? Yes. Huh? Yes. Real faith is tried. Real faith is exercised. Mm -hmm. And above all, you don't quit or you don't sit down. You keep the faith. I'm finding in this passage that the Bible here is speaking of spiritual not material, but spiritual capacity. Mm -hmm. Power given to each and every believer. Don't tell nobody that you believe that God is and don't have no faith to back it up. Yeah. Don't you try to fool nobody that God will make a way somehow when you're scared of trusting past your front door. Mm -hmm. Tell me somebody. Mm -hmm. Don't talk about faith if you don't expect to be tried. Do not even mention faith unless you've got a praying spirit deep down on the inside. Yes. Faith is a function. It's an action verb. Mm -hmm. Faith is a quality of thing. Not only hope for, but stop hoping and do something yes. about what your mess may be like. Oh, Y'all want to hear that? Oh, stop hoping that God will give you a million uh -huh. when all you need is a thousand. Yeah. Okay. Stop hoping that God will leap over windows, buildings, and walls and make you rich overnight when the richness that he has is deep down in your soul. All you have to do is let go and let God have his way. Amen. Somebody help me out here. Yes. Measuring your faith is a value. It's probably even described even through this entire chapter of Romans. But what Paul uses ter the terminology here He's talking about, as he speaks here, even to each measure, measure meaning each one of you and me and others have a gift. Are you there? How you value that gift also deals with grace and mercy.
This is God's discernment, not yours. Come on, somebody. Okay. That gives us a measure of service. Yeah. So what you may claim to be doing for God, and because nobody's patting you on the back, will blow up and smoke. The reason it will blow up, because see what you do for Christ, it will last. Yes. And it's not going to come with your neighbor saying it's going to be all right. It's going to be coming from God who is the author and finisher of that very thing. Do I have a witness? Yes. And some of you looking at me like you not only are you bored, but where are you going with this pastor? I'm telling you this, that above all, that if you're walking by faith, keep on walking by faith. Yeah. Yeah. If you keep on walking, you find out that there is a bright side somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. Not only is there a bright side somewhere, that, but there is something that God is trying to show you as well as others. Let me hold up right there. Yeah. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Let, let us look at, at this. Even when your faith is dry. Which brings us to this next passage of scripture. Somebody read Mark 11 and 24. Just stand up and just blast right out there. See, there's no reason for you to turn the page now unless you can close the Bible and ready to go home. Therefore, I say unto you, what things soever you desire, when you pray, believe that you receive them. And you shall have. Amen. So whatever you pray for, yes. and you say if you believe it, you got it. Y'all gonna strip yourself up here? <laughs> The first doesn't, doesn't guarantee. And he wasn't even telling the disciples that they could, they could get what they wanted. Simply just by asking Jesus. That's not what God is saying here. Even in this passage. God does not grant requests that violate his own nature or will. Now I need to stop right there because you need to see further up the road. And you can't see further up the road. So therefore, God already has a plan for your life. So therefore, when you pray and you don't get an answer, you get all bent out of shape. And you just flat out proclaim that God hasn't heard your prayer. But you're forgetting about the will of God. God's will is not your will. Somebody help me out there. You're not going to get everything that you ask for. Whether you believe it or not. Because if it's not in his will, then it violates who and not only who he is, but what he stands for. That's right. God is greater than you and I. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Oh, you don't want to hear that. Yes, he is. Why? I've been taught all my life that if I believe it, that it's mine. No, no, no. I find myself every now and then thanking God for the blessing or the doors that he didn't open up. Somebody help me out there. Can I stay here just for a minute? Oh, when, I, when, I, when, I was, when I was wanting this and wanting that and wanting to go this place and that place, I've got a whole lot of friends and loved ones who have outrun me and gone along. Had I been with them, you know that old knucklehead that you was chasing half of your life? That is an alcoholic or drug addict right now. Every time you look around say, I'm glad I didn't marry that. Don't you need some choice word. But you remember that girl that, that was so fine all the time. Looked so good. No, oh, but she had trouble on her mind. Oh, help me somebody. She's somewhere at St. Elizabeth right now. Not only is she on crack, 
and cocaine, but her brain is gone. I was begging God to open up the door for me and let me marry that sister. Boy, am I glad God didn't let me marry that sister. Come on, help me somebody. Almost, if there are some things in your life that wasn't meant for you to have, there are some things in your life that you still want that God is not going to let you have. Where God says that, well, it has to be in the will of God. Can I get somebody to understand what I'm talking about? That your prayer can still be a fervent prayer, but it must be in the will. Jesus is not going to write you a blank check and tell you to go claim it. He doesn't work that way. Well, I was told that you just asked and he would do it. Watch how you let that fall off your lip. Because you don't want to continuously live a lie. What do you mean, preacher? You calling me a liar? No. That's not what I said. Because there are things in your life that you've asked God for that He didn't give you. And you just witness up and down, in and out of church, that God did this and that deep in the back of your mind, you're slapping you So I want you to sit down and be quiet. But some of these things you didn't need. Some of these things were not good for you. Some of these things, first of all, you didn't deserve. But because of grace and mercy, I gave you what I did give you. Do I have a witness? Yes. Jesus' statement was not dealing with like what we do with a blank check. And the reason I say that is to be, to be filled. A request made to God in prayer must be in harmony with the principles of his kingdom. It must be geared, your prayer, your request, must be geared toward kingdom building. It, it's not about your pride and your ego. I, I understand a prayer life, and you must have a good prayer life, but be sure that when you get on your knees, laying flat out, prostrate before God, that you're honest with yourself. See, and the reason I say it, this honesty makes a difference in the name of Jesus is what we pray about. And John reminds us that there in the 14th chapter. What we pray for ought to be in the name of Jesus. Amen. And while you pray it, have the faith that goes with it. But you must understand that God's will and only his will must be done. But what I'm finding out that the stronger our faith, the more likely our prayers will be in union with Christ. Amen. Y'all didn't hear that. Amen. I said the stronger our faith, uh -huh. the more likely our prayers will be in union with Christ. Yes. In other words, some of us pray only when we need something. Uh -huh. Others pray just to, for the formality. And others just figure that it's just part of the service. That's when I'll pour it out and I'll pour it on. Uh -huh. Come on, help me. Some you ever heard that person that get up before a congregation of a thousand or more people, they'll pray for 25 minutes. Uh -huh. And all they ask them to do was bless the offering. Uh -huh. Huh? Some people pray just to be heard. Yes. They're not talking to God. They want you to think that they can really, man, that guy can really pray. Oh, you, you know what I'm talking about. Huh? But the Bible says we ought to be able to keep the same faith and grow from that very same faith. Do I have a witness? Amen. God would be happy to grant your prayer. There's no question about it. But you got to, you got to understand that He knows what you need. He knows how to supply your need. And believe me, He can accomplish anything that you ask Him. But He's looking and always has the best interest of you. Always. Can I get a witness? Yes. Especially if it's possible, and he's a God of the impossible, but there is nothing that he can't do, but there are some things he don't need to do in your life. Right. Do I have a witness? Amen. Mark here breaks it down. But even if you look just a little bit further, the 25th verse kind of tabs it and says, and when ye stand praying, uh-oh. Uh -huh. Forgive. Yes. Mm -hmm. 
it ye have ought and is in it, that your Father also which is in heaven may forgive you your trespasses. Yes, yes, yes. And I want you to get your pen and pencil out. Because there's no so misunderstanding. Here Jesus gave another condition for an answer to prayer. Somebody say answer to prayer. Answer to prayer. This was dealing with believers, relationships, one to another. Not the relationship with God, but believers' relationships, one to another. Here he tells the disciples in this 25th verse, when they, you stand praying, if, 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 if one of them held a, a grudge against someone, then he ought to first forgive mm -hmm. that person before praying. I know he's going to get quiet. Look at that 25th verse. Huh? Mm -hmm. If you had a grudge against someone, he ought to first forgive that person before praying. Why should this matter? Because all of us are sinners in the eyes of God. Not about how righteous or how much pride you think you are when it comes to salvation. You still are capable of sin. Do I have a witness? Amen. And he goes on to just break this verse down. Those who have access to, to him have it only because of his mercy and forgiving of sin. Somebody say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. The only access you're going to get is because of mercy and the forgiving of sin. In other words, believers should not come to God asking for forgiveness or making a request all the while refusing to forgive others. It's going to get sticky up in here. Huh? But you need to grow. Yes. Don't, don't come asking me for forgiveness. If you haven't forgiven your neighbor mm -hmm. in the pew besides. Yes, huh? Mm -hmm. To do so, it, basically all you're doing is you're not showing no appreciation for grace and mercy. Mm -hmm. Because you're trying to bypass the very stronghold that's holding you back from getting your answer. As well as your blessing. Come on, somebody. What I'm telling you is that it's impossible for your prayer to get answered if you don't have the forgiveness in your heart for others. It's not going to work. If your lip service, let me get personal here. You don't have to like me to come out to church. But the Bible says you have to love me according to God's word. That's right. That's right. You may not like my style. And above all, I may not be on your top ten list. But long as I got Jesus, that's enough for me. Because I learned one thing that I cannot please the pews. I have to do what God tells me to do. And the other side of this is if you don't like me, then that's your problem. But don't try to pawn me off on somebody else. Come on, somebody. You're not going to say amen to them. Is that in the Bible? Yeah, it's here. It's, I'm just coming in a roundabout way and using some application with me. Don't like me. But you got to answer to Jesus. Don't love me. You still have to answer to Jesus. And if you want to know why your prayers are not getting answered, stop talking about me and start praying for me. See what God won't do for you. That's right. That's right. See, I know I belong to 
of him. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. You can't take that away from me. Uh -huh. I'm not worried about nothing else. I have to do what God tells me to do. Uh -huh. But you cannot get closer or grow from your experience with God if you have down in your soul a grudge against your neighbor. You will not grow. You keep walking. But you keep walking in circles. Step by step. You ought to try to to get a little higher, and the Bible says a little closer to the master. Can I get a witness up in here? It's not about your pride, my pride, or anybody else's pride. It's all about Jesus. Help me, somebody. Yes. I love this passage. See, we have to give God all we have. You don't have to worry about giving him no credit. Oh, right. He's already got that. Somebody say amen. He's already got that. Because he's God all by himself. Finally, let me help him. Go home here. Paul tells us, even after all of this, if your forgiveness is low on the totem pole, then that's where your faith is. I know you ain't gonna like this. Because if you cannot forgive your neighbor, then ain't no need you telling the world that I believe the Lord, why the Lord will make a way somehow. The somehow is what you're gonna get stuck with. But God is not gonna lower any of his way of what he has for the expectation of his believers. And we have to confront ourselves and be honest and be upfront. Finally, Paul here closes it out here in 2 Timothy. Tells us from the exercising and from the trying of our faith. And let me tell you, I know you tried because it's, it's hard to forgive. I'm not going to Try to throw that out and let it expect it to, to walk out the door. Some husbands and wives are still up in the air on where their relationship is because of unforgiving spirits. And Satan will hold on to that. The church cannot grow without the kind of faith where forgiveness is a reality. Somebody did you wrong then the only way you can undo that wrong is through forgiveness. Yeah. Ain't no need you pity patting around about it. You have to forgive them. Yeah. Whether it be mother, father, child, grandchild, sister, or brother. Forgive them. Yeah. Jesus made the example when he said, as he hung there on the cross, he said, Father, forgive them for they know what they do. Somebody say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Paul here in 4 and 7 in the second Timothy. We often hear this passage. Fight a good fight. Paul knew it was the end. He called Timothy and said, Timothy, hey, my brother, you gotta fight a good fight. You can't just be sharing messing around and one day off and one day on. You gotta fight a good fight. In other words, you got to come to church ready to roll every time you come in the door. Don't bring that mess up in here that, that, that you 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 doing God a favor. Huh? Help me somebody. You gotta come up in here like you have some power or you have been in power or you got something to shout about. You got to want to say it again to God good to you. You ought to want to break out in the shout because God spared you another day. Because you have another day, you ought to shout hallelujah. And when you shout hallelujah, you can't help but let your neighbor know I'm all right with you. Paul knew that his trip was coming to an end. 
Tell the gentleman, he said, fight a good fight. The fight he fought was over to some extent, but the, the fight had been, he's telling us that the fight has been worthwhile. Because he had fought well. Paul, the race wasn't finished here in this passage. And he's not really talking about the race itself. But he could see that the end was clearly in sight. There are some circumstances in your life that God has showed you at one time or another that it hasn't been as long as it has been, but soon and very soon that he's coming back again. There are some issues in your life that every now and then you look up and think, but I just can't believe that my body, my, my physical, my portions, my molecules are changing. I look in the mirror, the makeup don't help me no more. And not only that, I'm walking a little bit slower. My steps are getting shorter. My breath is getting shorter. I'm getting weaker by the day. I know that one of these old days, when this dust gets rushed, the life is over. One day I'll fly away and be at rest. Call it here at the point where he can clearly see that it wouldn't be long. But what I like about this, it's important for us to know here that, that Paul made no claim to having won the race. Yes. Help me somebody. He was content with just having finished the race. Yes. That's why it's important that you keep the faith. Yes. Not just any old random mess on your brain. Yes. But you gotta exercise it, expect to be tried in it, and then keep on stepping step by step. Yes. I find out that even every year the Marine Corps has a marathon in D.C. It right. must mean the rest of the military can't run. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> and all you hear is about the, about the Marine Corps marathon. But I, I said all that to say this. The prize is not given to the first one to cross the line. The grueling breath is in it. Even the in between, the marathon, the six to seven or eight miles, depending on which route they take, is all about finishing the race. Can I get a witness? Look at somebody and say, I want to finish the race. I want to finish the race. I just want to be thankful to cross the finishing line. Seven is a complete number. Yes. Every one of us ought to want to complete the round that God has called according to this measure of faith. We want to accomplish an incredible and revealing finish line course as you break through and bust the tide of the rhythm when God says, Well done! Kept the faith and finished the goal. Paul he had never wavered in his faith. He trusted that soon he would experience all the promises God had given him based on his life and his ministry. God has that's a promise for each one of us. And even when we try, we've got to keep on walking by faith. Step by step, and even when trouble comes our way, we've got to keep on walking. Step by step. Get on your feet. Even when we're discouraged, you got to keep walking step by step. When weary and well doing, and even when you can't get a pat on the back, you got to keep on walking by faith. One day, God is going to give you a crown of life and to reward those who diligently keep on seeking Him. Seek Him where He may be found. Your neighbor may not understand what you're going through. But God knows all about you. Yes. 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 Y
may have to cry every now and then. You keep on walking by faith. Folk may show up and look like nobody's here. But you keep on walking by faith. It's not about winning this race on this Christian journey. It's about enduring to the end. And the Bible says, you shall receive eternal life. Look at somebody and say, neighbor, neighbor. No, matter what, no matter what, I'm going to keep walking, I'm gonna keep walking. By, faith. by faith. If mother don't go, if mother don't go I'm going to walk, on. walk on. Daddy don't go, Daddy don't go. I'm going to walk on. If my friends don't go, I'm going to walk on. And I want you to walk your way right up to this altar and as we go to God in prayer. And Dr. Apperson will close this out in prayer.